All right, question of the day. What is your favorite expansion for a game, period? Now, people have different philosophies on, on expansions. I think I've talked about this before. They want more of the same, or they want uh, something that fixes an issue with an old with the original edition. I always think of Champions of Midgard for that. Or maybe it's something where you go, man, I just want uh, miniatures. I want uh, better quality components. So let me know in the comments, what is your favorite expansion? Because today we're taking a look at Grand Austria Hotel. Let's waltz, or let's waltz. Waltz and via. You know, probably like that. Yeah, I think it'd be Vaults and Via. Uh, yeah, sure, anyway. <laughs> the point is, this is an expansion to one of my favorite games, even though I get angry every time I play this game. Not real angry. Game, board game heat. You know what I'm saying? And this expansion adds some modules. And as any good expansion would, there are modules that you can put interchangeably. You don't have to play them all. So, let's take a look at what Let's Waltz adds to Grand Austria Hotel, what these modules do, and we'll come back up and talk final thoughts right now. All right, so since we're doing an overview of the expansion only and not just the game because there's tons of places to learn the game, I just want to show you the new components here, and I'll kind of point them out as we go. First of all, uh, on the board, you have two sideboards. Now, we're playing with everything combined. It gives you some warnings about what to and not combine, uh, but, I mean, if you're an advanced player like we are, you can definitely play with everything combined. So here's the dance rehearsal board which corresponds to the dance boards over here and I'll show you these you're going to choose three of these based on player count and then lay them out they're going to have a bottom row and a top row and what happens is when you send somebody with a filled order instead of sending them straight to your hotel you can send them over here to the sideboard to the dance but the cost is champagne so you have to fill their request and then send uh, the champagne with them so the way this works is if we were to fill this card we need a strudel a cake and a coffee plus a champagne and we'll send them over here now you'll get the points for them at, just like in the end of the game but these spaces are limited except for the one on the far right here which is a balcony the balcony holds infinite spaces and it counts as being the top row of the final furthest right dance hall ballroom whatever they call it and these all score differently based on the three that you pick and they score after the imperial phase so the first empire the second one and the third one they'll score after those empire phases which gives you points usually majorities on the whole tile or majorities in a row or that one is kind of like a science card in seven wonders the more you have the more exponential points it's worth so one is worth one but five is worth 25. you'll send them from here and as you open these spaces you'll take the bonuses uh, the unique hotels change up what you get to start the game as well as give you a permanent player power which is something i really appreciate in the game is having a unique player power over here we have the celebrities yep that is jrr tolkien right there visiting your hotel and the way this works you'll notice there are now some blue red and yellow dice in the pool these are going to cost you to use but you're going to get the power for the rest of the round so for instance tolkien is when you fill a room through any measure collect two points plus depending on when you wait to buy them they'll be worth up to one two or four points you got Freud, you've got Einstein, you got Frida Kahlo, uh, Ma Mata what's her name? Shoot, I can't remember her name. Um, Matahari. You got a lot of different people in here to choose from. So you have the celebrities that are on the green cards, the visitors, but you also have these Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella in this now. The way this works is if you choose, let's say we want Tolkien here, you would pay a Cronus or Crone or whatever it's called, a dollar, for whatever dice is still there. So this would cost you one to take it. Plus, there's two new actions. Uh, three really there's an overlay that gives you the ability to get champagne now and one thing i really appreciate the new cards you're going to notice a difference look at the two cards they've changed the art now again maybe they did this in a different edition but i only have the original edition of the game so now coffee is black still all the colors are the same but they clean it up and show the icon too this one's a little lighter now strudel which is unfortunate because my strudel is definitely just little 3d printed strudels so now i'm gonna have to print some champagne to go with it because i've got coffee all of them, they look pretty great actually. Check out the cake, it's adorable. Little wine glasses and some coffee. My problem is the coffee that I painted is clearly coffee, but it's definitely a black cube and definitely shows as black on here. But that's that addition. Now, the only other thing is the new, uh, plus there's some new cards, but the only other major difference is there are this new action over here. It doesn't take a dice, it's called the skeleton key action. When you take it, you're going to get one resource of your choice, not champagne, and then you're also going to get first player for the next round, 
and then you're also going to get to take one of the actions at a level one. So it's a good option for if you have no money, it's a good option for if you just don't know what to do that turn, you need to go first next turn, it's really great for that. So that is all the new major additions. It seems like a lot when you're reading the rule book, but once you get it in play, it all really flows well together. And I'm going to talk in the final thoughts, especially how this changes the game and what it does. All right, Grand Austria Hotel, Let's Waltz, directed by Wes Anderson, written by Wes Anderson, filmed by Wes Anderson. Those are great AI arts. Anyway, this expansion, first of all, is one of my favorite expansions. I'll just say it from the out front, because there were moments in the original game, and this does what I like an expansion to do, first and foremost. The first module, the ballroom module, it makes it where there are times where you'd have someone on your tables and they'd be done but you didn't refresh a room and then no dice rolled to refresh a room and you didn't have any money to refresh a room so you had to take two entire turns trying to get it ready to do something that you essentially could have done already yes that's improper planning to get to that point i'm aware of that but my point is this with the option to send somebody to the ballroom now if you have champagne you can immediately send them to a place while you're also preparing a room which is great because those score and give you points so to me, this fixes one of the issues where if you didn't prep perfectly, you kind of get smacked for it. So this one takes that off the table a little bit. This is almost, I wouldn't say a catch-up mechanism, but it's a closer, tighter gaming mechanism to where you now have an option to send somebody if you didn't prepare properly with your hotel. Or if you found it, oh crud, the dice just didn't roll for me this time, what can I do instead? Well, then you can send them to the ball. But you get to score them, you get their benefits and all that sort of stuff, plus you get a chance to score them on the ballroom. Let's talk celebrities. Now, I love the celebrities wrinkle. The only downside is you're really only getting to use them for one additional act. I mean, technically two, if you use them for the action that that you're that they give you the benefit for, you could do it twice, but the cost of them is variable. And I like that because if it's the only dice there, well then you're fine. You just take it and use it. However, I really like the choices too. I like who you have sitting there, I like that nice chunky feel. I like that they're not a guest. They're almost like a celebrity in your lounge and their prestige allows your hotel to have more renown, giving you those powers. So the celebrities module is really great. Uh, as far as the personal player board module, I or not personal, the, the unique hotels, I love that. I love the fact that it changes your starting options. It changes your... Um, options that you get to do during the game like giving you personal player powers that really benefit you are amazing but the one i just used was the one that changes the price of your prizes or your rewards for doing those blocks of hotel rooms and that to me is really great carla had one where you got to get a staff card and when you do you you get, it's really really cool stuff then there's a starting player module the one where you get the skeleton key this is also a great mechanism for wow the dice didn't roll in my favor and i don't have any money but I can at least take that and I can at least do an action and get a resource. So you're getting to do multiple things for that, even if it's powered down some. So I really like that. And then the last module is just the extra stuff. It's always great to see more cards, more scoring, more uh, staff, all that sort of stuff. So all in all, this is a total package, Lex Luger, of an expansion. It's exactly what I want in an expansion. It's something that tweaks an issue I had with the game originally to where I now, because I'm not the best board game player, have a chance at least. Carl still beats me, obviously, but the gap was not a 70-point gap or a 60-point gap. I think it was a 14-point gap in the last game we played, which to me is pretty huge because there were times where I'd be like, oh, I got 68 points. She's like, cool, I got 134. I'm like, what? what happened, right? Yes, that means I'm not a great board game player, but what I love about this expansion is given the ballroom board and given those other tweaks that allow you to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to do, I really like this. My only problem is now I've got to 3D print some little champagne glasses and print them, so it's, that's, such is life. But all in all, I love this expansion. I will never play without this expansion, in fact. I'll never play the base game by itself without at least the ballroom expansion because, to me, that really gives you that option on the table of, oh man, I messed up and I don't have any rooms ready, but I can at least send them to the ballroom. To me, that's great. It does make the one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one greater than or equal to, greater than, equal to, greater than, equal to a little more tricky because you're dealing with three items instead of just the two, you know, coffee and uh, 
coffee and wine and strudel and cake, you can now have to figure, okay, I need three dice there in order to get a champagne, so I'm going to have to pay a dollar to get it. But it makes sense. You're paying a little more for something nicer for your guests. So all in all, great expansion, 9 out of 10 for me. I love this game already. This really cements it as a permanent play for me as opposed to a, oh, I know I'm going to get my tail kicked. So if you haven't played Let's Waltz, you haven't played this with Let's Waltz, if you had the same issues I had with the original, try it with Let's Waltz, and I promise you, you're going to like it a whole lot better. So that is my review of Grand Austria Hotel Let's Waltz. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you.